At yeah. what point did you realise that you had been involved in the making of film that would have such an immense influence on our culture? You never know. Remember something, m most of those great actors were unknown at the time. Al Pacino, Diane Keaton. Marlon Brando was not unknown, but he had come in for an audition, you know, to secure the role. It was an incredible acting ensemble. And maybe that's part of it, you know. I think going to work with those actors, um, I, I will tell you, it, it, it was very charged. It was a highly intense, uh, creative uh, atmosphere. Do you have a moment or a memory on set with these actors that has perhaps inspired you throughout your career? Working with Marlon Brando, for all of us, for all of us, we would, you know, the, the, one of the towards the end when he cuts the orange and puts it, that's an improvisation. He did that. He becomes the monster. It, it was wonderful to see. And I remember we were, John was there, John Casal, Fredo, and we were, we were sort of on the ground, you know, trying not to be in anyone's eye line. And watching a Marlon Brando work, it's very focused, it was very specific. Um, and the fact that Marlon knew about film acting, and the rest of us kind of didn't yet. And Marlon really did act cut by cut. He understood where he was at all times. Um, am I here? Well, if I'm here, I don't move my head. If I'm here, I can scratch the cat a certain way. So he, he really, he understood, you know, he really understood film grammar. Um, you know, you can't forget where the camera is until you know where the camera is. Um, he was a, you know, he wore earwax in his, his ear to create this sort of active listening. We, we, we missed our cues if we did it. But I think it was watching somebody conserve their energy and to always know where he was each day, each moment, cut by cut. And I refused to be a fool dancing on the string held by all those big shots. How much of the legend around the film has actually created your own public persona? Interesting. Legend. It, it, well, it, it's, it, it, it's just... It, at what moment does just being nervous become legend? But that's okay. A nervous legend. Uh, well, you know, we all have our stories and now it's a, it's a much... It's, it's 37 years later, so you have heard for 37 years, way before you were born, gee, you know, I asked my brother for a screen test, he said no, then I got a chance to come in a month later. So this becomes part of your mythology. Uh, it's interesting to bring that all back. And I, I felt, looking at my performance uh, last night in that first one, just how nervous I was. And you know, and the context of realizing, my God, I, I really did sort of beg to have this audition because I had terrible stage fright. Now, there's one particular scene I want to ask you about, and that's that fight, fight scene between Connie and Carlo. My, my one shoe fell off. Well, actually, a shoe fell off. I wasn't barefoot when I was doing it because they put shoes on me because I, but a shoe came off, and I, and I. I didn't want to. I didn't want them to have to set up everything again because I was the sister. So I kept running. It was it was a tough scene to do, and technically it was a tough scene to do. It's interesting that you say that you didn't want to restart because you were the sister. I was the sister. Is right. that something that informed the entire shoot for you? That first shoot was very hard for me. Yes, I didn't want. I mean, you know, my poor brother. Uh, and this is legend, we talk about the legend, and everybody is aware of it, was a very young director who was doing his own personal movies and was running out of money and took the job. And so uh, Johnny reminded me of this. I mean, and Francis speaks of it. There were two, two to three weeks <laughs> where, you know, he wasn't sure if, if he would be uh, not fired himself. And so you don't always, and, I, and this is really true, you don't always need a family member then. 
you know, because then it could become politically difficult for, uh, isn't that what the movie is about? So I was terribly aware of not, uh, you know, screwing up. Do you like Connie? Thank God, you know, I love all three Godfathers, all of them, on, a, on what Francis was, was doing with all three. Uh, as an actor, I, I do love the evolution of Connie. She, like this in the front, and then the second one is, uh, you know, it's based on the king is dead, long live the king. On the wall, da 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 and now it's your turn. And so Connie has no place until her own mother passes away, and she can then emerge. By the last one, she's, I call her Sunset Boulevard. She's kind of the father, too, you know, wants it. I, I, I like, she's a terrible victim. Terrible things have taken place for her. She breaks my heart, actually. No matter what this idea of power is, she still breaks my heart. She's a throwback to, to something. Uh, but uh, she's a very interesting character to me. Fredo. You're my older brother, and I love you. But don't ever take sides with anyone against the family again. Ever. <laughs>